Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode we're going to go back into Harry and start sorting out a bunch of these niggling problems and see if we can get it uh, working the way it's supposed to. Alright guys, welcome back and uh, those of you watching previously will have seen that uh, I took Harry on about a 4,000 kilometre round trip to Tasmania with a bunch of other uh, people with a similar affliction to myself as uh, Porsche owners who uh, just like to uh, get out and drive their cars and um, overall it was a great experience but I did mention in the previous video that uh, there were a few bits and pieces that I still need to sort out. If you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can uh, catch up. And if you're enjoying these sort of videos, just think about subscribing, uh, hitting the notification bell. It does make a difference. So uh, some of the, the issues I had previously, as I mentioned, were things like the air conditioning and um, the big one was the wipers. Um, I also have been having an issue with the, uh, the battery on this car for a long time. So I think that's the first thing we are going to tackle. All right, so the battery on Harry has been a bit of an issue for me for quite some time. Uh, it's not always left on a trickle charger and there just have been a few things that weren't great and it, uh, yeah, it just has, it never really has been cranking hard enough and doing uh, the job that I hoped. So that's where uh, I reached out and Optima have actually sent me one of their yellow top batteries. Um, I am keen to get this in the car. It's got um, a bit more uh, cranking amps than this old one. This one was a 660. This has got uh, 800 cr uh, cold cranking amps. But also, uh, these should last about three times as long as the old lead acid batteries. It also, it's never gonna slosh and spill because it's solid, uh, solid state battery. You can mount it up whatever way you like. Um, so uh, fingers crossed this will last a lot longer and uh, be a much better addition to Harry. So uh, let's whip this old one out and whip the new one in, which means moving this cross brace out of the way. So I'm troubleshooting this wiper issue. So as soon as power goes to the circuit, it blows the fuse. So instead of blowing a multitude of fuses, what I'm using is I'm using my power scanner. Now this thing, I've spruiked it before. It's not sponsored. I just love this thing. It is absolutely must have for uh, any home auto enthusiast. Basically, um, it's connected up to the battery of the car, and uh, if I touch it on anything that is actually um, grounded, it will it will light up. It'll give me a uh, a you can see it's there. It lights up green, shows me that it is ground, and uh, shows zero volts, and it'll actually beep at me and let me know what it is. If, it, if it's a uh, a 12 volt source, it will come up with the the voltage. It'll go red. Uh, the other benefit is is that if I can actually touch this uh, end on something and if I want to energize it, if I press the button, I can actually send 12 volts to the circuit. It's also got a built-in um, circuit breaker. So basically what I found is uh, on the fuse panel, the wire that uh, let out that kept blowing the fuse um, was this red white wire. I've traced it to the motor itself, the red white wire, and, uh, and disconnected it and Again, if I touch the, uh, um, the, the end of my power probe onto that uh, red, where the red white wire goes in, it tells me it's grounded. If I try and send power to it, it trips straight away. So uh, I can just trip this instead of going through a million fuses. But I have found now that that, that circuit is, uh, is the one that's actually the issue. So we're gonna pull the motor out now and have a look and see if there's anything I can fix or whether it's just toast. It has worked intermittently, so I know it still works, it's just whether there is something internally that is grounding that is uh, making it troublesome. So 
So I just spent a whole bunch of time pulling out the motor, uh, tracing all the wiring back. Uh, I opened it up and checked out the internals. Everything seems to be working in there. Um, it, it, it was having a short in there. I have then uh, followed it all the way through, uh, pulled out the switch, um, had a play around with the internals of the switch. I've managed to get it all working again the way it's supposed to, including parking the, uh, the wipers. But uh, uh, it's just it's just such a random thing that keeps it, it seems to be a random short that keeps dropping out. So we'll see if it actually uh, I'm going to put it all back together again, see if it still works, and then wait until it stops the next time. All right, so two minutes later, I just put another fuse back in the car, tried to turn it on, and it blew the fuse straight away again. Um, Ultimately, I, th I just tried it again and set it all up, removing the parking circuit, because that seems to be the circuit that's actually blowing. Um, I've tried the terminals inside. I can't see how it is shorting out. Um, ultimately, what I think it may actually be is just that the switch is, the switch is, is done. It need, I need a new wiper switch. I don't know if they're, new, they're available. The internal parts of it, it's not really a serviceable thing. There's lots of little arms and stuff like that that get to misalign and stuff. So I'm going to have to look and see if I can get a new wiper um, switch. But I'm pretty sure I can connect it up now. Leaving the parking circuit on the motor itself disconnected, I should be able to run the, uh, run the wipers and just have non-parking wipers. And hopefully it won't uh, blow the, uh, the circuit. It's a pain. It's something I'm going to fix because I hate w uh, wipers that don't park. But it's better than having no wipers at all. So, uh, frustrating, intermittent electrical problems. All right, guys. Well, the next thing we're going to talk about is something that's really, really annoyed me and definitely what not to do. Coming back from Tasmania, this car was absolutely disgusting. It had did 4,000 kilometers of uh, plenty of hard driving and the wheels were black and the whole car was covered in bugs and everything. And I gave it its first wash when I got back. And I thought, normally I just use soap and water for everything and just leave it as it is. But I thought the wheels were particularly black, covered in brake dust because a couple of track days and everything. And I thought I would use some wheel and tire cleaner on it. And I checked the bottle beforehand. I didn't read it super thoroughly, but it said perfect for all, uh, fine on all factory wheel finishes. And um, these are not a factory wheel, but this is a factory wheel finish um, of Fuchs, which is basically a painted center. And these are anodized aluminum lips. I sprayed the, uh, the stuff on and um, only had it on for you know, a minute or so and then went to wipe it off and this is what is resulted. And this is a clean wheel. This is how it looks when it's clean. It's actually taken a lot of brake dust and embedded it into the anodizing and it's completely trashed the wheels. Now this is the worst one, but it has completely wrecked my wheels. Since that, I have... Um, been told by many people is basically with Fuchs wheels and particularly with these, uh, this style, they have a an anodized aluminium lip. It's not plain aluminium, so you can't sort of fix it with auto sole or sort of aluminium polish because it's anodized. It shouldn't need that. All you use is soap and water. And at um, best, apparently what uh, Porsche used to recommend was Vaseline, uh, believe it or not, on the lips is all you would put on it, if anything, to try and uh, sort of shine it up. But you just leave them as they are. So I have completely trashed this finish. Um, what I am going to do now is I need to go through and I need to try and see what I can do about repairing them. Now, the thing I, I realize is that I, ha I have wrecked the anodizing. Now, whether I can sort of lightly sand back the anodizer, the, the top of the anodizing and, uh, and buff it up again, or whether it's just going to have to take completely come get all the anodizing off and just polish them up. And in, in that case, they will need to be continually polished forever or else they'll just dull off really quickly because aluminium unprotected dulls off quite quickly. Um, in that case, if they are wrecked, I might actually go back and just paint the lips silver 
instead. I don't actually mind the silver look over the um, um, the anodized stuff, and then I'm not going to have that issue anymore. So let's see what we can do to fix this now. So first of all, I'm going to get some very fine sandpaper, probably like 1200 grit, and see if I can just sort of lightly wet and dry rub these and bring them back up a little bit better than what they are. So I didn't end up sanding them at all. I just ended up trying to use some uh, mag and aluminium polish and just um, buff it up. And I, uh, I use a little rotary buff and uh, I am pretty sure that I've probably taken off most of the anodizing. I can't really tell, you can't see it. I don't know if there's a way to tell if it's still there besides whether it actually starts to oxidize again later. But you can see that it's still definitely far from perfect, particularly these bits where I couldn't get the machine buff in there. I've sort of done it by hand, but it's very difficult. Um, that said, they were never amazing anyway. You can sort of might be able to see some water spots here, sort of, yeah, like they're, they're, they were never um, super shiny anyway. But um, in any case, that is, uh, that's a win. I mean, that was the worst wheel. So I'm gonna go around now to all the others and see if we can do the same. All right, well, that actually did an okay job. They're probably as good as they were before or close to it. They weren't amazing before anyway uh, with the finish. I don't know, uh, I'm pretty sure I went through the anodizing. It's hard to, to tell, as I said, but because, particularly because it was black on the, uh, the polish, tells me that it, it's gone through the anodizing. There's no anodizing left. So these are going to um, stain and sort of turn pretty ugly. And um, I think probably going forward, I'll probably repaint them silver. Um, at least the the edge. I still like the uh, uh, the RSR finish, which meaning the silver in the centre with the black sort of backing. Um, but for the time being, they'll do the job. So let's move on to something else. All right. So the next thing that was highlighted by my Tasmania trip is the lack of storage space in Harry. So uh, obviously, with these big seats in here, they're fixed. And then I've got the roll cage in the back and now there is some room in the roll cage to sort of to be able to put bags and things like that. But the trouble is, is that I can't actually get anything in there because uh, the seats are fixed and the gap is so small that there's nothing, even getting my helmet in, I had to move the passenger seat all the way forward and I could just sort of shoehorn my helmet in between the seats and the roll cage to get it in on the back. But I have... Um, recently discovered a solution. So I was online the other day and somebody posted up something that I thought was absolutely brilliant and I went straight out and ordered something uh, uh, similar to what they showed and that is this thing. So what is this you ask? This is a seat base for my passenger seat that actually locks in and goes in between the, uh, the floor and the rails of the seat and it actually has a lock on the back so that I can actually tilt the entire seat forward. Now, obviously, it's going to be limited by the, uh, the roof of the car, but it's going to give me some more space that I don't currently have. You'll be able to get the seat up and forward and out of the way and have a whole bunch more space. Now, for those asking, it's not sponsored. This is, uh, I think this is an OMP version. There's a lot, bunch of other brands, there's lots of other people who do it, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I thought this is brilliant, so um, I'm going to try and install that now. I said I don't know whether this is going to fit this car without to modify it. We'll just pull the passenger seat out and uh, have a look. All right, so I spent a bit of time then uh, fitting up the uh, the frame 
to the, the uh, seat and then quickly realized that I can't actually use it because the, uh, the bar to actually, uh, for the slider, to activate the slider, hits the seat. I didn't think that far ahead. So basically what I'm gonna have to do is, currently I've put the, uh, the, the tilting frame in between the seat and the rails. What I need to do is put it between the, uh, the rails and the floor to uh, be able to give myself enough room to, to uh, tilt the seat. So let's undo all this and um, try again. I might have to drill some more holes. I've already done it a few times. <laughs> All right, that was lots of playing around to get the seat in there, but uh, I now have my um, tilt function in the car. So moving the seat forward, I don't really have much room to get stuff in. It's quite difficult to get things in here. Now, I don't get a lot more room, but I now have that. Now, from there to there, it doesn't look like much, but that actually opened up a whole bunch more space. This is much wider, and I can actually get things in and around into the car now. Um, makes a huge difference. It's just a matter of locking it back in again, and then the seat's nice and solid. So, uh, yeah, I am quite happy with that upgrade. So, with that, that is uh, all for this week, and um, hopefully some of you guys will come and say hi at Luftwasser 2022, which is... Uh, uh, on the weekend, this weekend when this comes out. So uh, uh, it's the 1st of April, 1st, 2nd, 3rd of April in Albury, Wodonga. Um, there's going to be about 160, 170 Porsches, I think, are uh, uh, booked in. So it's going to be a, a fun weekend. Looking forward to it. But uh, as always, do the things, like, subscribe, join us on Patreon if you want to watch videos a day before everybody else, ad-free. And uh, if you need parts for any of your Porsches, Make sure you compare prices at PorschePartsByJeff.com first. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one.